every year, the best Supercross riders are in pursuit and they'll sacrifice anything, blood, sweat, and tears to attain what they're after, the 2013 Monster Energy Supercross title. Entering the season, it was truly anyone's guess as to who would take home the title. With the sports landscape looking brighter than ever and more talent than ever hitting the track, the bullseye would again be on the back of the two-time defending champion, Monster Energy Kawasaki's Ryan Villapoto. To make it three straight, Villapoto would have to fend off foes both familiar and new, including a trio of past champions, Red Bull KTM's Ryan Dungey, 2-2 Motorsports Honda's Chad Reed, and Yoshimura Suzuki's James Stewart, and emerging threats including the Team Honda Muscle Milk duo of Trey Kennard and future star Justin Barsha, and Rockstar Energy Suzuki's newly rejuvenated Davey Millsaps. This is Bar to Bar 2013. guys stand by Like every season of Supercross, the story of Monster Energy AMA Supercross begins in Anaheim, California. With a sold out crowd packed into Angel Stadium, the best in the sport were about to compete for the ultimate trophy. As the past, present and future stars of the sport collided, the changing of the guard was underway. As things got underway, an unlikely veteran put his early stamp on the season. The season opener for the 2013 Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Championship. Who's going to get the start? That looks like Kennard with a great one on the outside. Millsap grabs it. Barsha, Kennard, all right there. Dungey's in the mix up front. Wow, Doesn't look, look like a great start for Villapoto. Kennard is on it, and Millsap's up front leading him. These two battled in their heat race. What will they do in the main? While Rockstar Energy Racing Suzuki's Millsaps, Honda Muscle Milk's Canard, and Honda Muscle Milk's Barsha took control of the podium position in the early going, last year's champ was in a less lofty perch. Here comes Villapoto on that green Kawasaki with the red number plate sporting the number one. Oh, oh Villapoto off, off the track. Big mistake and goes over the berm. He's got to get back on as quickly and as safely as he can. Towards the front in lap seven, a three-way battle was soon underway for second. Here's Barsha. Looks like he wants to turn up the heat a little bit. Barsha on the 51. And Dungey, as you pointed out, Ricky, right there on that five, the Red Bull KTM of the uh -oh. former champion. Barsha has a little mistake coming out of that turn, misses the triple. Dungey's gonna catch up pretty close now. In lap eight, Villapoto's night would take a horrific turn. Villapoto alongside of Stewart, oh. and he goes down again! Ryan Villapoto, and he's limping! And then another Tickle. rider crashes, it's Tickle! Yep. And Villapoto was limping as he got back to his bike. Villapoto's Anaheim one nightmare continued in lap 15. I was just trying to find my groove, and then when it, things didn't go just perfectly, then you try a little bit harder, and then you find yourself making more mistakes. Oh, Villapoto has more trouble. Oh. With the focus back on the top spot, Kennard made his move. Here inside. comes Trey, looking inside, couldn't get it done. I got to lap 15, I thought, you know, I got a, a little bit here in the tank. I think I can push all the way to the end. Uh, he's getting close, man. He, oh, over him. Uh-oh. Here comes Kennard. He makes the move up the inside. But the drama was long from over. That's where I saw him hit a line and before the loop section, and uh, I had found a better line. 
that I could carry a little bit more momentum in, and uh, I, was, I was able to get him to the loop section. Man, he got blood in the water at lap 19 and, and attacked. One, One lap to go! Yes. The crowd on its feet here in Angel Stadium! Uh-oh, 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 here's Millsaps! Who's gonna hit the quad? Oh, oh Kennard goes sideways! Millsaps, Millsaps is in the lead! I knew he wasn't able to do the quad out of the corner. Then I, I knew I could, you know, calm down a little bit and, and uh, I was okay. Davey Millsap, second in the championship last year. Nobody had him on their radar to win here in Anaheim. Nobody except for Travis Pastrana, who tweeted it to us earlier. And Davey Millsap is about to do it. He wins Anaheim. <laughs> it was Millsap's first victory since 2010 and the fourth of his career. Kennard and Dungey rounded out the podium. After Millsap's shocking win, change was in the air. You know, the last couple of years, I've been getting hurt and getting hurt and getting hurt and really haven't had an off season. And, you know, I put my head down and, and uh, you know, me and Yogi worked really hard on the off season along with my trainer, Pete. And, and we just, uh, you know, we pushed and pushed and pushed. And finally, it's, it's hard work paying off. And, and, and that's why it's an emotional victory. Prior to Anaheim 1, the usual names were soaking up all the attention, but the spotlight had now shifted to Davey Millsaps as he tried to win again at Chase Field. In the past, rookies have established their names at the Phoenix Round, and this year, an all-new face to the class would take the whole shot. Here we go from Phoenix! Villapoto gets shut out. Millsaps again. Millsaps with a great job at the start. Dungey was off the track. That's him on the top left of your screen. Barsh has got the lead. Millsaps runs in second. Villapoto was again out of the picture as a fall dropped him to eighth as the first lap progressed. Oh, oh now Villapoto he goes down. Is down. He pushed the front end. Two of the sport's biggest names went head to head in lap five as Stewart and Villapoto battled for sixth. Stewart and Villapoto oh. right there with Jake Weimer. Stewart bobbles, that opens yeah. the door for Villapoto. The fight for podium position was well underway as the race moved past its midpoint. How reminiscent Kennard that was. Right there alongside of Reed and takes that spot away, moving to third. You better get on it because Villapoto's gonna get by him here. Kennard would aim for more in lap 14 as he took on Millsaps for second. Kennard has caught Millsaps and Trey gets around him. How about big red Honda running first and second here in Phoenix? I could feel uh, Kennard and uh, I could feel Villapoto. And once they got around me, uh, you know, I was okay with fourth place because I was giving everything I had for that night. Kennard's run at a second consecutive runner up finish would have given him the points lead but Villapoto was turning up the heat on the Honda Muscle Milk Rider. Fight for second. Kennard has his hands full with Ryan Villapoto. As this race starts to tighten up, Villapoto charging all the way, full 20 laps. Oh, big problems for Kennard. Down he goes. Villapoto goes into oh, second. Oh, the stuck. Trey it just was. can't get it going. There, there goes, goes Millsaps. That drama wouldn't come close to touching Justin Barsha, who took things wire to wire. Oh, you're just hitting your lines perfect and doing everything so good, and it was just one of those races that are perfect, and uh, you know it's tough to get those races all the time, so when they come, I'm pumped on that. No doubt the victory was the first of many more to come in the young rider's future. Here comes Barsha, checkered flag. He wins his first ever Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Championship points race. The win pushed him into second in the overall standings behind Millsaps, who took third on the night. My uh, Muscle Milk Honda was just doing awesome. I'm just pumped on uh, this race and racing with the 450 guys and just having a really good time. Reed moved up to fourth with his fourth place finish, while Kennard slipped to third after coming in fifth on the night. Villapoto's second place finish pushed him to seventh in the standings. While Davey Millsaps looked to continue his early season surge with another Anaheim victory, riders like Ryan Villapoto aimed to power into the points race with their first win of the year. 
But at the start, another surprising face would earn the whole shot. Here we go! Monster Energy Supercross main event! Whole shot, who's gonna get it? Jake Weimer. Weimer! Weimer gets it, but Marcia with a good start from a lousy gate pit. Kennard quickly grabbed first, but Weimer and Barsha were on his tail into lap two. Fresh off his Phoenix victory, Barsha looked to make his push in lap three, but the track had other ideas. That was one of the races where I actually ended up banging my head pretty good and ended up breaking my nose, and uh, I came up to the triple and lost traction and couldn't really back out of it and, and case the triple and really uh, took the, the wind out of my sail. Barsha's got big problems. He's dropping like a rock. Barsha with some sort of mechanical issue. Oh, he He's and hurt. He's, off. he's hurt. Yes. In those situations, when you when you case the triple, you have a tendency to smack your face, the front of your helmet. Asterisk Medical Unit tending to him right now. Oh, look at the cut on his nose. Looks like it's coming from his left eye. With Barsha out of the mix, Millsaps and Villapoto pressed forward and began to battle it out for second in lap four. Next on Villapoto's hit list was the leader, Trey Kennard. Villapoto wants a win as well. Here he comes. The Anaheim crowd on their feet. A podium position was still up for grabs in the final laps as Millsaps and Reed fought for third. One of the grittiest riders in the sport, Chad Reed, is working it pretty hard, and Reed takes over third. That inside. Oh, and Millsaps oh, once again. Baby, right back. Wow. He's fighting hard. Watch this here, left side of your screen, yellow and black gear. Millsap, solid third place going, leads the bike in. Oh, too far. Slides out. Chad Reed says, thank you very much. I'll take that. For the night, the champ was back on top with his first win of the season. It was also the 25th of Villapoto's career. Here he comes. He knows this is a big one. There it is, Ryan Villapoto. The fireworks go off as he takes his first win of 2013. Kennard held on for his second second place finish of the season. Reed captured third, while Millsaps finished in fourth. Still good enough to hold on to his points lead. A record crowd of nearly 47,000 packed ODOT Co Coliseum for what would turn out to be a very eventful fourth round. One rider looking for a pickup was James Stewart, but had won the last two Oakland rounds. Ryan Villapoto aimed to make it two straight race wins and would look to get out in front of what would turn out to be a raucous start in Oakland. How about the whole shot? Who's gonna get it? Here they come, right at you. Oh, they take the camera out, but it's Villapoto getting the whole shot. Oh, hang on. Oh, Reed gets Reed piled does. into. Stewart is in there. A bunch of riders get stacked up, including Trey Kennard on the 41. Josh Grant on the 33. Stewart Kennard. is limping. He's holding that right leg. Remember, he's got a problem with that knee. Me and Davey just met in the middle. Uh, Davey's a little bigger than me, so uh, I exited stage right. Unfortunately, uh, got into JG, and that caused him to get out of control, get whiskey throttle, and then uh, drive drive the two of us up into uh, you know the rest of the field. The two riders that escaped the damage made headway as Justin Brayton and Davey Millsaps followed Villapoto in the round's early stages. In lap three, Millsaps and Brayton went head to head for second. Stalking the backside of Brayton, looking for the right move. We talked with Millsaps earlier today and he says, oh, here he here goes. comes right up the inside, got him. After being slowed down by the first lap's pileup, Ryan Dungey was closing in on podium position and had Brayton in his sights for third in lap 11. Watch the 10 of Justin Brayton here. Joe Gibbs racing number 10. Oh, he tries to turn down and Dungey's there. Trey Kennard, who had minor involvement in the lap one crash, had also made a push towards the top and closed in on Mike Alessi in a battle for fourth with just five laps to go. Good, maybe bar to bar through that rhythm section to the next corner, Trey has a position. Way out ahead was Villapoto, who made things look easy on his way to his second straight win. 
Here he comes. Villapoto lights the candles in Oakland. Millsaps took second and increased his points lead to seven over Kennard. Villapoto moved up to third and was now eight points behind. Reed finished in 12th and fell to fifth overall, but he was fortunate in comparison to Stewart and Barsha, who were not able to finish. With the scene shifting back to Anaheim for the third time, Villapoto was riding high and looking for his third victory in a row. The night would get off to an ominous start for Ryan Dungey and his heat race. Things kind of took a little twist, you know, 30, the 30 board, uh, 30 second board went up, kind of blipped the throttle a few times, kind of get the bike warmed up and ended up doing it one more time and getting it really cleaned out and I felt a little bit of a sag in the rear and kind of uh, kind of knew what it was right away. Well, Grant. Oh, and Ryan Dunty with big problems. Oh, look at the shot. rear, the motorcycle just hung down there. You yep. got a problem with the shock there. Is that that, is it, I know they've been testing air shocks. As he moved into the last chance qualifier, the black cloud hanging over Dunchy hadn't quite lifted. Going into that second turn, somebody lost their front end and tucked it, and it was a big pileup. That, that's where I was like kind of sweating it a little bit. Can I read us? Oh. Oh. And then there's a huge pileup. Massive. There's oh, partridges man, there's down. everywhere in there. Can I read it? Partridges oh. in it. Dunchy's almost there. You see partridge on the 85. All I could think about was you, the only top two qualified. But the KTM rider would persevere, finishing second in the LCQ and advance on to the main event. From the get-go in the main event, the slick track in Anaheim would make for a topsy-turvy race. Villapoto gets boxed in on the inside. Looks like Brayton. It is. Brayton, but then Alessi on the 800 comes around the outside. Chad, Chad Reed. Reed's right there. Oh, oh he's down into Brayton. Two they weeks in a row. Over. Yeah, I just kind of went up the front, up the inside of uh, Brayton, and as I was trying to put it up the inside of him, he was trying to put it up the inside of Alessi, and the snowball effect from the week before. Villapoto got stuck in there, and Dungey, who was second. so far outside, <laughs> oh. is now second, and this one is upside down. From everything that was happening, you know, the, the one thing I wanted to do and, and really um, would have showed a lot to myself was turn it around, put yourself up there on the start, you know, and, and pitching yourself up there. And, uh, and to win this thing would, would be pretty dang cool. Going for the lead is Dungey. Coming inside on it. The Red Bull KTM rider has the lead. Oh, 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 Alessi is off. Dungey now jumped to the rhythm section. And I followed Dungey on the right hand side and, and he was on the left. And the next thing I know, I, I jumped over the tabletop and he had jumped all the way from the left to the right and was underneath of me. And uh, I think you can kind of hear me, so he went to move back over and I, and I just clipped him. As a battle between Dungey and Davey Millsaps continued for the top spot, Stewart had pushed his way up to third. Stewart found his way into a battle for a second with Millsaps in lap seven. It was a long battle. I mean, he was going one line, I'd go the next, and I'd go over there, and he'd go over there. Stewart to the inside! New oh. second place rider! Whoa. Millsaps wasn't finished and closed in on Stewart with just six laps to go. It's the best one we've seen so far this uh -oh, season. Oh, he misses the fall. triple! He does, and that opens the door for Davey. There we go. Millsaps goes back to second. Justin Barsha had been lurking in fourth for the better part of the night and made his push on Stewart with just three laps to go. Triple, oh, Stewart makes a mistake. Big one, and there goes Barsha. Just like that. Anaheim three was all about Ryan Dungey, who collected his first win of the season and had turned a nightmare night into a dream. I think as a team, you know, crossing the finish line and, and winning, it was just pure excitement. Here he is! Ryan Dungey lights the candles in Anaheim with an amazing win! Dungey was the fourth winner of the young season and climbed into second place in the points race. You know, I can't tell you what a, what a great victory this is. Just uh, the last four races have been good, a little bit up and down, but, but this is a good, um, good step in the right direction. Millsaps finished in second on the night and increased his points lead to 14. Villapoto dropped to fourth with an eighth place finish and was now 17 points behind Millsaps. Before heading east, the stars of Supercross would race one final time in the Golden State. 
San Diego was the site of round six, and one rider without a 2013 win was Chad Reed, who had famously triumphed at Qualcomm Stadium a record six times. With over 55,000 in attendance, the points leader quickly reminded his rivals who was on top. Oh, Bill Apoto cuts right across. Millsaps with the lead. The points leader gets the whole shot, and the magic continues. While contenders Ryan Dungey, Ryan Villapoto, and Trey Kennard were all languishing out of contention in the early stages, Reed looked focused and was zeroing in on Millsaps as the race neared its midpoint. So, I mean, everything was falling into place. It was just, you know, I was losing the front almost every lap in that turn, and I tried changing up the line, but just couldn't, couldn't make it work. So, uh, thought I'd just try to commit to it and make it work, and, and uh, we all seen what happened. There's Millsaps, and Reed is right there. Chad did not have a good day. Here he is, you know, shrinking Millsaps' lead, put pressure. You know he's thinking about seven times here in San Diego. Uh-oh, guys. Former winner here in San Diego as well as Davey Millsaps back in 2010. And Reed right there with him. Oh, Reed goes down. He loses the front end. Throws away his shot at the win. Gets it going. He's still in Stalled third. In there goes Braden and Dungey. He can't get it fired. Now the Honda comes to life. Stewart goes by. Villapolo goes by. Reed's miscue eased the pressure on Millsaps, who held a comfortable lead on second place Justin Barsha and would coast to the wire-to-wire -wire victory. I've never led from start to finish. I mean, and I won, I got passed and passed back. But that was pretty cool to, to do something that I've never done before. With the magic this year in 2013, taking him to the top step of the podium. Here he comes, checkered flag. Davey Millsaps and Suzuki have won here in San Diego. The victory had to be all the more thrilling for Millsaps as it came in his 100th consecutive Supercross start. If he hadn't already, the rock star Suzuki rider had now cemented his name within the ranks of the sport's elite riders. Millsaps continued ascent from pretender to contender to front runner was surely on everyone's mind as the scene shifted to the Lone Star State and Cowboys Stadium. Just before the main event, James Stewart's already turbulent season faced another setback as the clutch on his bike was damaged, keeping him from starting. Yeah, I was just sitting on the gate and uh, something happened to the clutch. Uh, it's not these guys' fault. These guys put 100% in there. It's just a freak accident. It's a bummer. We felt good. I, I felt great. It was. It, I felt like tonight was my night. Two of the championship's top contenders would battle for the whole shot, but only one would emerge to own the night. Who's going to get the whole shot? Trying to come from the inside. Can it be Millsap? It is. The Rockstar Energy Racing rider on that Suzuki did the whole shot again here. And Chad Reed, and he's going to come across the triple in he's second. In second. He's right behind Villapoto, who has the lead, and Dungy sits in fourth. With Villapoto flying in the lead, the focus turned to the other two podium spots, and Millsaps bared down on Reed for second in lap three. Here comes Millsaps. He cut to the inside. There he goes. Got him. He's got Reed. So Davey Millsaps, the points leader with the red number plate, moves himself to second. Former champions Reed and Dungey would find themselves squaring off for third through the race's midpoint. And in lap 14, one would capture the final podium spot for good. Wow, that overhead shot. You could really see that racing line. And Dungey, there he comes right inside. And he stands oh. up Reed, who has a hard time staying in the saddle. And Dungey moves up a spot puts himself in third and gains a couple more points over Villapoto. Dungey would close in on Millsaps in the final laps, but the Rockstar Energy Suzuki rider did just enough to hold on to second. Villapoto eased to his third victory of the season. Here he comes. Checkered flag and Ryan Villapoto lights the candles again. The two-time defending champion was now within 24 points of Millsaps in the overall standings. Millsaps increased his points lead to 21 points over second place Dungey. Everybody knows it's sport's stressful, but uh, 
you know, you got to still have fun with it. You know, if, if we get a third, a third's a third. You know, that's good. It's on the podium. If we get a second, that's also good. So we got to start thinking that way and, uh, you know, just quit putting ourselves up on this pedestal and, and when things don't uh, go our way, you know, we, we, you know, we're bumped. Trey Kennard's seventh place finish dropped him to fourth overall and 35 points off the pace. The round at the Georgia Dome was the site of the biggest crowd of the season as close to 69,000 fans packed the place to see Supercross's best. Atlanta would also witness the Supercross debut of Eli Tomac. The rising star captured the 2012 West Lights Championship and after a great start in the 250 class this year, had his sights set on even bigger things in the future. As the main event got underway, it was clear who was in charge in hot Atlanta. Weimer trying to get the inside. Who's going to get there? Stewart. Stewart on the Suzuki takes the whole shot. Villapoto's right there from second. Weimer's in the group as well. Trailing Stewart at the end of the first lap were Ryan Villapoto and Davey Millsaps. Neither rider was seriously challenged for a podium spot before the end of the race. In his Supercross debut, Tomac shined. The young rider started near the back of the pack, but worked his way up to seventh by the race's finish. The night lacked drama, but was certainly okay with Stewart, who would lead wire to wire to claim his 45th career Supercross victory. Seventh rider to do it on three different brands. It'll tie him with McGrath and Reed, third time. Third all time on the win list. Here he comes, James Stewart is won here at the Georgia Dome. This was the ninth season that Stewart had collected a win and he joined Jeremy McGrath and Chad Reed in this exclusive club. The celebration had to be a welcome respite for Stewart after a series of disappointments to start the racing year. Like I've been telling, I felt like if I can get a good start these last maybe two or three races, I felt like I can win this thing and uh, got a great start. Dude, I don't know when last time I let a race. So it's been uh, a long time, so I was a little nervous out there, calm down. But. Villapoto's second place finish helped him gain two points on the leader, Millsaps, who came in third. After Stewart triumphed in Atlanta, five riders had now captured wins in the first part of the season. With the action moving to St. Louis, over 60,000 fans were on hand to witness one of the most riveting rounds of the season. Would St. Louis continue the changing of the guard? Michael Lessi goes for the whole shot. He's got it. Wow, and Stewart and Villapoto got together. Looks like Stewart's going to come out. out. Now Barsha coming inside to take over second. Looking to build off his win in Arlington, James Stewart continued to push the leaders. In lap three, the red flag came out as Kyle Chisholm and Matt Gerke made contact with one another. Chisholm had to be taken off on a stretcher, but was able to give the crowd a thumbs up as he was taken off the track. The race would soon restart, but not before Ryan Villapoto was penalized three places in the standings due to a red flag violation. Ended up jumping on the red cross, but actually I, I was on the triple and I ended up rolling the takeoff and then doubling. I was getting a little impatient and, and just made a mistake. The riders lined up single file and with 17 laps ahead of them, took off. Barsha quickly made his move around Alessi. In lap four, it was a pair of former champions moving up the ranks. Oh, he goes inside on Alessi. He's up to third, and Reed looks pretty good. Those two riders would go bar to bar in lap five, with Villapoto putting pressure on Reed for third. Oh, Villapoto around Reed. Oh boy. And we got a new rider up to third. While those at the front of the pack were jostling for position, points leader Davey Millsaps couldn't join the fight as he rode in seventh as the race neared its midpoint. In lap eight, an old champion, the current champion, and perhaps a future champion were squaring off as Stewart, Villapoto, and Barsha mixed it up for podium position. Here comes Villapoto, does it. Barsha trying to get around Stewart and Villapoto right there. Uh -oh. oh, we got a battle on our hands here in St. Louis. Barsha looks outside, cuts it inside. Into the whoops they go. He just set the third fastest lap time. Oh, there goes Villapoto. Villapoto trying to get inside. Scraps the triple to the inside. Villapoto, bar to bar, and he passes him. Play. Oh, oh Villapoto, inside. Oh, the crowd loved that as Stewart diamonds the corner off and comes oh. back to take the lead.
in lap 11, the flag came out again, and a little controversy entered the night's dialogue. James passes Villapoto back right there. Okay, you see the, see the, see the cross flag? Cross flag right, right there, down okay? here. They're you, just you, okay, you cannot got the flag pass. out. You cannot pass on a cross flag. Watch this, okay? Rolling, not, everything's not through good. The, through the triple, you can't. Okay, but now there's another uh, cross flag, flag right, right, right there. So he passes there. Uh, be an it's call. just, you know, now you got the yellow flags waving at the end. You can pass on a yellow flag. Yes. Just not red cross, but there was also a red cross flag, so we'll see what they say. With Villapoto assuming the lead, Barsha had Stewart in his sights for second. Barsha needs to get there aggressive. He goes. There you go. There it is, right there. Bam, bam. Bangs wheels. But lap 13 would prove to be unlucky for Barsha. Can the young man on that number 51 muscle milk honda he taps a tough block out of the way and loses second to stewart and third to reed and now dungy goes by villapoto's lap 11 pass would be ruled legal by the ama and the monster energy kawasaki rider would capture his fourth win on the season in controversial fashion two wins here at the edward jones dome and the fourth win of the year for Ryan Villapoto as he takes the checkered flag in St. Louis. After coming away with a victory in Daytona, Ryan Villapoto had caught up to and passed Davey Millsaps for the Supercross points lead. Indianapolis was next on deck, and Villapoto had to like his chances, having finished atop the podium in Indy for the previous three years. A huge crowd of over 60,000 piled into Lucas Oil Stadium for a wild round. With early lead changes and crashes, the opening lap proved to have it all. Who's going to get the whole shot? Bang at the top of the berm. Who's got it from the bottom? It's Millsaps. Millsaps. Stewart's behind him. Millsaps is in the lead. Look at the pile up behind him. Can Irie's involved? Whoa, oh, Davey. Millsaps makes a mistake. Here comes Stewart, new leader. Things hadn't been going well for Trey Kennard in quite a while, and they didn't get much better for the young rider when Kennard landed wrong on the third lap. The crash chased Kennard from the race, but he would walk off under his own power. In the fifth lap, the battle for second was heating up with Villapoto breathing down the neck of Millsaps. Remember Dungy, third in the championship. Oh boy, Villapoto can close to He's Millsaps. He goes after him again in the sand. Pushes around the outside and takes the spot. With all eyes on that battle, things suddenly got interesting at the front as Stewart shockingly stalled. Stewart down. Stewart has issues. James Stewart and the crowd comes to their feet. He can't get the Yoshimura Suzuki going. The madness wasn't quite over, however, as Millsaps had a locked in Ryan Dungey gaining on it. Villapoto leads. Wow. Dungey right there on Millsaps. And they've had issues already this year. Millsaps trying to counter. Here he comes. Inside. Gonna get ugly. He's got to. He went from gaining two points on Villapoto to now down five in just one lap. Dungey's improving lap times eventually put him in reach of Villapoto. Just in front of a former champion, Ryan Dungey. He's closing in. He's coming after him, and we've got a fight for the lead. Villapoto and Dungey. That battle is heating up again. Final fourth of this race, and Villapoto's got to deal with Dungey again. On the final lap of the night, a couple valuable points slipped through Millsap's fingers as he went down off a turn, allowing Stewart to pass him for third. Ryan Villapoto was again going to reign in Indianapolis, his 30th career victory and a growing points lead, the Knights reward. On his way to his 30th career victory, Ryan Villapoto has done it here in Indy. Villapoto built his advantage to nine points over Millsaps with the victory. Dungey's second place finish now put him 17 points behind the leader. Ryan Villapoto was in a groove. In just five weeks, Villapoto had not only erased a 24-point deficit, but had built his own nine-point lead 
as the season moved into its later stages, every mistake was now magnified. As soon as the gate dropped, there was mayhem in Toronto. Here comes Villapoto up the inside. Is that going to be the good spot? Villapoto looking for the whole shot. And Chad but Reed. It's Chad Reed who takes the early lead. Villapoto's right there, and so's Millsaps. Title combatants. Hungry for his first race win in weeks, Davey Millsap stormed towards Reed in lap two. Millsaps has been dealing with injuries himself. He's been a little bit under the weather, and tonight he wants a win. Here he is, Millsaps back in the lead. Villapoto tangled with Reed in lap three. We're going to see just what Villapoto has. Two time reigning champ. This guy is on a roll. He is the guy to beat right now. Oh, inside, coming right after Reed. Right there. Reed tries to cut back in. Can't get it done. And Bill Apoto's up the second. Ryan Dungey would soon enter the podium picture in lap five. And now physically hurting even more. And Dungey, Dungey. coming after Reed. He gets around him. Over the course of several laps, the Toronto crowd was treated to a neck and neck battle for the top spot. Here comes Ryan again. Oh, he gets inside. Clean, though. Clean. Villapoto tried to capitalize on Davey struggling to get off that berm. Couldn't get it done. Here's Roy King charging after him last time. Right here, he went to the inside. He's there again. Davey oh. stalls him, and now Dungey's right there. There it is. Oh, there it is. Just past the halfway point, and Villapoto takes the lead. Dungey would relinquish third after his bike stalled out, but would be able to get back in third with a few laps to go. Villapoto increased his lead and glided to the win. It will be his seventh win of the year, his fifth out of the last six, and his 31st career victory. It was his fourth race win in a row and extended his points lead to 12 points over the night's runner-up, Millsaps. A crowd just shy of 50,000 poured into Reliance Stadium with just five rounds to go. Not at the starting gate, however, was Chad Reed, who missed out on the action due to knee surgery. Could another rider put a stop to Ryan Villapoto's winning streak? Villapoto trying to get the whole shot, but it's going to be a lessy once again. And everybody's chasing him. Here comes Barsha and Kennard. Villapoto wants to get around the lessee and check out. He's got it. Wow. Look at wow. that move for the lead. <laughs> Back from injury, Trey Kennard was making strides and was up to second in the second lap. Ryan Dungey also had his eyes for the podium. And Dungey checking, oh, there he makes a pass. That's exactly what Dungey needed to do because Stewart was really starting to get close to him. In lap seven, Dungey and James Stewart began to put the heat on Kennard in a fight for second. Here's a fight for second. Dungey wow. trying the outside line, cuts back. Kennard cannot counter there, and Stewart closes in as well. Here's Stewart. He's going to get around Kennard. With just 10 laps to go, things suddenly came to a crashing halt for James Stewart as he'd lose podium position and a whole lot more. Although he'd eventually continue, the damage to his bike would force him to exit the track early. There would be no frantic fight for podium position in the dying laps in Houston, as the dominant effort from Ryan Villapoto secured him his fifth straight win, a career first. Six wins and a second in the last seven races. That is how you win a championship. He lights the candles here in Houston. He's won again. The win bolstered Villapoto's lead over Millsaps to 21. Millsaps finished fifth on the night. After his second place finish, Dungey now trailed Villapoto by 25. Ryan Villapoto carried a 21 point lead into Minneapolis, but the talk of the town was local boy Ryan Dungey, who grew up in nearby Belle Plaine. For the first time since 2008, the gate would drop for Supercross in the North Star State. Here come the Reds, here goes the gate! Oh, look at the start from the outside by Michael Lessie. He's got the whole shot. Hill 
runs in second. The Heat Race winner. Can he keep it going? Bill Lapoto comes around the outside to move to second. From the time the gate dropped, um, Bill Lapoto obviously was leading. I was in second, and we put on a good hard fought battle all the way to the end. Dungey now challenging for second as well. And the Minnesota crowd loves their homeboy guy up front. As they have on multiple occasions during the year, James Stewart and Justin Barsha would go head to head, this time in a fight for fifth. Nice save. Here comes James going to make the pass on the inside. Oh. Barsha tries to come back. Ooh, clips it. This is one of those tracks where you really have to be precise on these rhythm sections. However, Stewart's run of misfortune would rear its ugly head again. What's Stewart oh, doing? Oh, Stewart, a big problem. What happened? He's shaking his hand up. And he's going off the track. Stewart is done. Where is he going? Possibly an injury oh, from his, his right hand. hand. His right hand. Stewart's injury would force him to miss the final three rounds of the season. The Supercross world is long pined for a dungy Villapoto clash on the track. By the time I got into second, I was a couple seconds back. He was putting on a hard charge early in the race, and um, and we kind of finally settled into a groove. You know, and that's when I was able to start rolling things a little bit better. I found a few lines that worked out and was able to just kind of start inching up on him lap by lap. He is really charging that whoop section, and listen to the crowd as he comes through this section. <laughs> they love it. Hometown hero. Look at that inside line. Once again, Dungy has really found a way to get some traction with that KTM. Look how close Dungy is now. He is closing up, and the fans are loving it here at the Metrodome. Couldn't break away from Ryan, and and you know that's that's really what he needed to then stick a wheel in. And then once he sticks a wheel in, then it's kind of on the defense mode. Wow. He's right there. They've held the Super Bowl in here, but tonight it's all about Supercross and a super finish in the making. It was just amazing. I've never heard fans yell that loud. I've never heard a stadium that loud. It was just, and hear it. Dungy funneling right back in line here. He's being so patient. Both riders riding such a smooth, consistent oh, race. Mistake by Villapoto. Here's Dungy. Here's the pass. He's right there. Oh, oh he couldn't get it done. And Villapoto knows he's got a battle on his hands here tonight. I don't think I've ever raced in a in front of a crowd that has ever been that loud. Oh, Dungy oh, goes. And Tickle could be a factor here. They split the lane. Dungy leads him. Side by side, they're banging in Minnesota. Villapoto back in the again. Bar to bar through the rhythm section. He takes him high, almost to a dead stop. Villapoto keeps ending up with the inside. Retains the lead. Into the whoops again. Such a tricky area. And Dungey leads him out. I saw the lap board. I was like, all right, two, two laps to go. And I was like, you know, this is going to be an all-out sprint. You know, I know he's going to go for it. I'm going to have to go for it with no mistakes. Here comes the split. Villapoto's there. He's going to take one last shot. Dungey wins at home. Growing up as a kid here at Minneapolis, coming to watch the Supercrosses, and I uh, find myself in the position of on the gate now, and it, it's a dream come true. It was Dungey's second win of the season and pushed him past Millsaps and into second in the points standings. After seeing Ryan Dungey propelled by a partisan crowd in Minneapolis, Ryan Villapoto hoped to get the hometown treatment as Supercross headed to CenturyLink Field in Seattle. A crowd of close to 54,000 would greet the world's greatest riders, but a rain-soaked track was not as kind as things got underway. Oh, big problems for Villapoto. He was caught up in the middle, and it looks like Dungey had issues there as well and might have gotten knocked down. This could be a huge turn of events in the championship. In the wake of the pileup, Chad Reed was left with an injury that would force him to exit. Justin Barsha was doing just fine, however, surging to huge advantage. Here comes Justin Barsha, the number 51 Muscle Milk Honda. The factory Honda rider leading here in Seattle. 
Villapoto would make a move in lap three. Villapoto chasing Alessi. He's got him. But Villapoto was never able to put any real pressure on Barsha, who was having a debut for the ages in Seattle. Here he comes towards a checkered flag, and Justin Barsha wins Seattle in his first try. Barsha's wire-to-wire -wire win was his second victory of the year and led a youth movement that was changing the guard in the sport and in the overall standings moved past Dungey, who rebounded to finish fourth in Seattle. Both riders now sat 25 points plus behind Villapoto. For the ninth time in Supercross history, proceedings would head to Salt Lake City's Rice Eccles Stadium for the penultimate round of the season. Ryan Villapoto sat on the cusp of history, looking to become the fourth rider ever to win three straight Supercross championships. Could either Dungey or Millsaps get off to that great start needed to delay Villapoto's title coronation? Can Villapoto make history and become a three-time champion and join that rarefied air of Hannah McGrath and Carmichael, some of the greatest names in this sport? Villapoto's got Hall of Fame credentials. Can he join those three here tonight? Here we go. Watch turn number one. He's through. Villapoto's in second, going for the lead. Where's Millsaps and Dungey? Dungey's in the lead. No, he's not. It's Villapoto going for history. As Villapoto moved out ahead, Millsaps would charge at Dungey in lap three. Here we go. Millsaps, he's got Dungey. Dead even as they come out of that corner into the next bowl. Still side by side. Dungey not giving up. They cannot take each other out. Villapoto's run for the victory wouldn't be routine, however, as Millsaps and Dungey closed the gap with eight laps to go. Down to a 1.6. They are really closing in on Villapoto, and we have got eight laps to go. What a great finish to the race here in Utah. He's got Canary in front of him. Davey clears him, and you can hear the crowd coming to life. They can smell it here. With just two laps to go, things were still in doubt in Salt Lake. Villapoto gets wide. Here comes the crowd to wide. And the problem one is that they get into it. Yep, one guy, just one of them has to finish in front of Villapoto to take this championship to Vegas. It is on here in Salt Lake. It's less than a second between the two of them. As he proved throughout the season, Villapoto was just too good. The final lap, here we go. It's just a tick over a second. Millsaps throwing everything at him. Dungy has slipped back. Crowd on their feet as Millsaps comes after him. Oh, could it come down to the whoops section? It will come it down will. to the whoops. It will, one way or the other. Look at everybody on their feet. Championship Ooh. possibly being decided in this wood pad right here. Villapoto has we to be go. mistake free. Villapoto dives into the woods. Millsaps right behind him, giving it everything he's got. And Ryan Villapoto wins his third championship in a row. He joins the elite crew of Bob Hurricane Hannah, the king of Supercross, Jeremy McGrath, and the greatest of all time, Ricky Carmichael as the only four riders in Monster Energy Supercross history to win three titles in a row. The Salt Lake win was Villapoto's 10th of the season, a new career high. To win a race in this series, and, uh, and what we do is, is just, that's unreal on its own. So to win a championship, it's, uh, it's amazing, and to make it three in a row, it's, uh, man, it's, it's unbelievable. I can't, uh, like I said, I can't thank everybody enough. While Villapoto continued to raise his profile in the Supercross record books, the fight for second place raged on. Millsaps finished second on the night and held a three-point lead on Dungey. That battle would have to be settled at the final round in Las Vegas. The 2013 season of Supercross would wrap up at Las Vegas' Sam Boyd Stadium. 
While Villapoto was already enjoying the spoils of victory, Millsaps and Dungey both sought second place. In the race for the hole shot, some different names cropped up. Weimer, first one to the big corner. He was great early on in his heat race. Can he put it together in the main? Here comes Reed on the 22 and Short on the 29. All three of them would love to end the Supercross season with a win. And Villapoto wants number 10. He's running in fourth. Weimer and Reed's run at the top wouldn't last long, however, as Villapoto quickly zeroed in. And look at Villapoto making the moves up into the top three. He wants more than that. He goes right by Reed. Wow. Now he's setting sail after his teammate. This Weimer giving it everything he's got, and here comes Villapoto. In lap two, Villapoto and Weimer would tussle for first. The two Monster Energy Kawasaki factory teammates side by side. Villapoto with a big handful of throttle. He's coming back into the stadium with the lead. Weimer, he's pushing hard right there as they come down into Monster Alley. Villapoto falls back to second as Weimer retakes the lead. But not for long. Whoa, Villapoto jumping through the whoops there. And looking to spoil the green party Whoa. is Dungey on the KTM. Weimer getting into the back of his teammate Villapoto there almost went down. Dungey was moving up himself taking second place and for the moment seemed poised to capture second place for the season. But Davey Millsaps wasn't out of the picture, taking on Reed for fourth place in lap five. Here's Davey. What a valiant effort he's put in all years. He battles with Reed. Coming wow, through the that. super sweeper over the, whoops, over the finish line jump and Davey trying to pick up a couple more points. Reed's working hard though. Got that inside line. This is going to be close here. Millsaps up to fourth. Millsaps' run continued into lap six as he pressured Weimer for third. Oh, oh Weimer God. bobbled. Here comes Davey. He took his hand off and oh. pushed him. Did you see that? I didn't see that. But I was just noticing how tight Davey uh, turned in that corner. I mean, he. That was amazing. Look at that once again. Bill Sapp's able to just put his bike wherever he wants it. This yeah. season he has been so strong. There it is! But Weimer comes back! Oh, what a great battle! How is that lake getting through this for Davey Millsaps? Got he him plans there. it, drags it, oh, and takes the spot! That pass helped secure second place for the season for Davey Millsaps. A bright spot earlier in the season, Trey Kennard was forced to leave the track in lap 10 with mechanical issues. In front, Villapoto was gliding, with Dungey too far behind him to seriously challenge him for the night. Las Vegas would be another feather in the cap for the three-time champion. Villapoto going for win number 10. Dungey going for second in the points. Final corner of the season. Ryan Villapoto, the three-time champ, has 10 wins in 2013. Villapoto finished 33 points ahead of second place Davey Millsaps, with Dungey finishing just one point behind Millsaps. The past, present, and future all met in the 2013 Supercross season. New stars emerged, old titans had their moments in the sun, and the current king of the sport was crowned again. And next year, more talent is on the way as future stars Eli Tomac and Ken Roxon enter the fold. Will Villapoto reign as champion for a fourth time with Dungey, Millsaps, and a hungry group of young guns on his tail? With so much talent spread across the sport, it's truly anyone's guess as to what the future of Supercross will hold. One thing that is certain, we can't wait to find out.